Hello, my name is Andreas. Thank you for joining me today on my channel. I made a video not so long ago on how to edit 3D video in Premiere Pro. And I thought it would be worthwhile doing a video particularly for the Fujifilm 3D W3 camera because it needs a little bit of TLC. So join me as we cover this today. So, in my last video, which by the way I've got linked above and below, I showed a workflow that looks something like this. It shows how to edit a side-by-side -side video. But the Fujifilm camera doesn't produce a side-by-side -side video. Instead, it produces a special multi-stream AVI file format. Now, there used to be a method for creating a side-by-side -side and individual left and right eye videos using software provided by Fujifilm. It was called MyFinePix Studio, and I've covered that in an earlier YouTube video that I've produced. But unfortunately, this no longer exists, which prompted me to make this video here. What I will show you is how to make a side-by-side -side video from this AVI file using a different method that works today. You can then upload this side-by-side -side file directly uh, to your devices, or if you want to, you can upload it directly as is to YouTube as well. You can also then follow the remaining workflow I put together in this previous video where I show you how to edit a 3D video. But what is even better, I'm going to show you how you can make the left and right eye files directly from this AVI file so that you can skip having to make a side-by-side -side video first if you want to edit your video in Premiere Pro. So, let's get started. Okay, so here we have the AVI file from the Fujifilm camera of a video that I've recently taken. Now this AVI file, if I try to open it up, I've got as my default player, VLC player, you can see that it comes up with a broken or missing index message. It doesn't really know what to do with this AVI file. I can play it as is, but uh, obviously it will only just play one side uh, of that uh, video, either the left or the right uh, video. I'm not sure which one it picks. Um, but as you can see, it, it doesn't really recognize that format. Now, you may not have VLC player as your default player. You may have Windows Media Player as your default player. So let me just open it up with that as well. And you can see it does something strange with that uh, as well. It, it opens up the video, okay. It doesn't give an error message, but it does give you another window here. It obviously sees that there is something extra, but just doesn't know what to do with it. So this file gives problems, as you can see, with the standard players that uh, we have on our Windows systems. But then we're not really interested in using those players to watch this video. We would much rather, of course, watch this video on a 3D TV or some other 3D device. Um, but for that, we will need to convert it to a format that is more common for those sort of devices. So we'll have to convert this video to a side-by-side -side format. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do now. And I've got the instructions for that here in my description of this video. And for that, you'll have to go to the heading called Make Side-by-Side -side File. And underneath that, I've got a FFmpeg command that will create a side-by-side -side video for you. Uh, if you don't have FFmpeg installed, I've also left you with some instructions right down further here in the descriptions that you can use to get that installed. Now, before we use this command, let me just quickly run through the parts of that command so that it's not just gibberish. Uh, this first section here uh, basically means that it will execute the FFmpeg command for every AVI file that it sees in the directory in which you run this command. So this filter complex uh, command here combines the two videos together 
And for that, it places the first stream and the last stream in the AVI file and stitches them together using the hstack command. Then you will need to specify your aspect ratio. And uh, if you use your HD setting, which is your 720p setting on your camera, uh, then the aspect ratio will be 1.7777. And uh, trust me, that is going to be the format that you want to use. If you use any resolution lower than that, um, you will need to specify a different aspect ratio. But uh, I also don't know why you would want to do that. Um, the 720p is a low enough resolution as it is. You don't really want to go any less than that. But if you do, the aspect ratio that you will need to set here is going to be 1.3333 instead of 1.7777. Then the next command here is which codec we're going to use. And we're using the uh, H.264 uh, codec. And I'm also specifying in here some metadata. I'm specifying that frame packing equals three. And the reason I do that is so that you can upload this video straight into YouTube and it will recognize it with that metadata in there as a 3D video and will uh, place the 3D icon on there and will play it back in the various different 3D formats that it supports. Then this part here uh, stitches in the uh, audio into our final stream as well. So we don't want to miss out on that. And uh, finally, it writes out the uh, video to an MP4 format. OK, so what we want to do is copy and paste that command. I'll copy it and uh, we'll paste it into a command prompt in that directory. So I'll open up a command prompt paste it in here and run it and as you can see it creates a video here for us now it hasn't quite completed that run yet let's just wait until it does that uh, before we open it up okay so there we go it's done that and it's done that real time I, I didn't speed that up in any way um, but it of course will depend on the size of your video how long that will take now opening up that video you will see that we have a side-by-side -side video uh, created from our AVI file and that is now ready to upload to YouTube to uh, put onto your loom pad uh, to put onto your 3d TV or whatever else you have uh, by means of uh, 3d devices the one thing that I would recommend that you do not do with this side-by-side -side video is to use it as your input for editing this this uh, this clip uh, the reason i say that is because every time you convert uh, a file you have some form of loss of quality and we've already converted it once to an, to a side by side video here if you were to convert it again now to a individual left and right eye video which is what you would generally need if you're going to edit this in something like premiere pro um, then you will suffer two quality losses so what you ideally want to do is only convert it once. So you take the AVI file directly and convert it to left and right videos without going into an intermediate side-by-side -side video. And that's what we're going to cover next. All right, so here we start again with our AVI file. And now we want to, instead of creating a side-by-side -side video, we want to split it right into its two parts, into the left and into the right parts. So to do that, let's go into our description again. And I've got another section that describes that, that section called make left right files. And in there, I've got this command that you will need to copy and paste and execute. But before we do, as before, I'll just quickly describe its parts. Again, I process this for every AVI file that you find in the directory. And again, I use the H.264 uh, codec. I've got a couple of additional parameters here though that I set, and they allow you to control the quality of the output. And I generally don't like to go with defaults. I generally like to have the quality a little bit higher. So I've set these values slightly lower. So the lower the value here, the higher the quality. 
uh, basically it will create a larger file and will take more time to process but I'm quite happy to take that sacrifice for a video that has slightly higher quality. And then I specify that I do not want audio and I don't want audio on the left hand side, I'm going to do it on the right hand side. So that's what this uh, little uh, parameter does here. And um, then I specify the first stream as my left hand side and I output that to this mp4 file. And that mp4 file has an underscore L to indicate that it is the left hand side. Then I repeat all of that and I do that for the right hand side and you can see that this one has an underscore R to specify that it is, that it is the right hand video. Also the audio that I map into that, so the audio is the middle stream and the last stream is the video. Uh, so I want both of those in my right hand video. And uh, that's what this command does, so let's copy that and um, again I'll open up a command prompt and paste that in there. And if we go back to uh, our directory here, we see that we've got those two files, one with an underscore L and one with an underscore R for left and right. It's not completed processing that yet. Um, these two files we can then import into Premiere Pro or Vegas to edit our video. So let's just do that now that we've got that done. Um, I will open up uh, Premiere Pro and go back to drag those two videos that we've got right in there so that we can start editing them. Now if you want to know how to edit a 3D video in Premiere Pro, I do have a separate video describing that and I've got that linked above. So from here on in, it's a generic way of editing 3D video. There's nothing really specific here anymore uh, that we need to do for the Fujifilm editing. What we needed to do specifically was to get it into the right format out of this special AVI format that we saw earlier. So there you go. That's now ready to be edited in Adobe Premiere Pro. Okay, so on editing in Premiere Pro, I do have a video, as I've mentioned, that shows you how to do that. And that continues pretty much where I've left off here in this video. Now, just a couple of notes before we close on editing content from this camera. Now, there's critics that say that this camera does not produce good video. And you know they're right. It doesn't. It doesn't produce good video. There's a couple of major issues. One is that it doesn't produce video at a high resolution. It's, it's very low compared to images. It does take good image resolution. And another thing is that it does not have stabilization. And those two issues together make the video pretty bad. But having said that, I would question what else is out there that has this nice and compact form factor and has an eye separation like this that is ideal for taking quick on the run 3D video. So I would say we just have to make do possibly with what we've got for now. There may be other cameras coming out in the future and I'll review them if I can of course. But for now, even though it's bad, it's pretty much something that we may just have to make do with. So if we have to do that and we've got those two issues, then we might as well see if we can do something about at least one of them. Now we can't do anything about the resolution, but whilst we can't do anything about that, we may be able to compensate for that by working on the stabilization. Now in this video that I refer to where, you, where I show you how to edit 3D video, I show you how to do stabilization post-production. But I'm a big believer in getting things right in the first place, not having to do things in post-production but doing it whilst you're shooting the video. So I've experimented using a gimbal like this. This is a DJI OM5. And I've tried to get it to work with this Fujifilm camera. And it does work, but trust me, it doesn't work straight out of the box. So this, this camera actually has the right weight ratio factor for this, uh, for this gimbal. 
but there's a few hacks that you'll have to apply in order to get that to work. And I hope to cover that in another video soon. But for now, thank you for watching this video and God bless. Thank you.